Watching RT coming to you live from Moscow, I'm Marina Joshi. Welcome to the program. Well, it was a bloodstained image which marked the end of the old regime, but which some fear also hints at a bloody future. The graphic footage of Colonel Gaddafi's demise and questions over his death continue to cause controversy. That says Libya's interim rulers rushed to call for a celebration of what they call the country's final liberation. Well, RT's Anissa now he joins us live now from Tripoli. So hello to you, Anissa. Bring us the mood from Tripoli. What are the people there saying and what's uh, life there like post Gaddafi? Well, it's still early, of course, to completely assess the situation post Gaddafi's death here. Certainly people celebrating across the country as the uh, official so-called liberation was announced on Sunday. Uh, celebrations very lively here in the capital, Tripoli. Uh, and very few people, really, when you go out and ask them what they want now from the NTC and whoever uh, comes in. Uh, right now, the organization promising elections within eight months. Uh, but analysts are saying uh, that, of course, is not a for sure thing because the population is very heavily armed and even at these celebrations although there were lots of games and uh, and things for the kids to do there there's a lot of weapons out on the streets at least uh, as I've been seeing here in the capital and so their next step now is of course to disarm the population because there are fears uh, that first of all there could be conflict between different tribes across the country uh, and then within the NTC and other officials these uh, who were the rebels that began this fight for freedom in Benghazi earlier this year that there will be a power struggle, in fact, between them, and, and most of those groups are very well armed. So that's uh, one of the security, uh, one of the security challenges that the country is now facing, among other things. Much of the country has been destroyed, and though these people are celebrating and just uh, full of elation that uh, Gaddafi is finally gone, few people here, at least the people we've been speaking to, are really thinking about what that means for the future of Libya. Well, absolutely, Anissa. We just uh, over the weekend saw the footage that came out of Tripoli with people rejoicing there. But, of course, when the high spirits subside, all the hard work will have to be done there. But is there a realization of huge challenges that lie ahead? There are tremendous challenges. Let's not forget that pre-war Libya had one of the best living standards uh, on the entire continent. Some people say that, in fact, it had the best in terms uh, of life expectancy, child uh, mortality rates. Uh, there were great social benefits. There's a European-style health care program. And so once the dust settles and people start realizing, uh, for instance, 60 percent of the country right now doesn't have running water. If you go into restaurants or bathrooms, at least here in the capital, and I'm sure it's much much worse uh, in other parts of the country. There's no running water, and, and so that's starting to happen. Today we're planning to travel uh, to uh, one of the country's main uh, water systems, which was completely destroyed. It's still uh, being disputed who destroyed it, whether it was NATO or Gaddafi loyalists, but this is uh, one of the problems that people will be facing. And once they stop celebrating and start trying to go back to their normal lives, and they realize they still don't have water. Uh, by the way, Internet has been completely cut off for the last two days, so it's very difficult to work here. Once these people start realizing uh, and comparing, perhaps, what their lives were like pre-Gaddafi and post-Gaddafi, we might see uh, people who are, who are upset about it, in fact. Right now, though, uh, it's very difficult to find people who will actually talk about that. That's one of our main challenges here this week, is to try to find people and have them analyze the situation for us. A lot of people are afraid to talk about Gaddafi in any kind of positive light. Uh, my colleague Maria Finoshina, all of the people that she interviewed uh, just a couple of months ago have been killed. Uh, all of my contacts that were given to me from London, their phones are switched off. So this is a real challenge for us to try to uh, find people who are willing to openly talk about Gaddafi and analyze pre and, and post situation here in Libya uh, over the next couple of days. So that's what we're trying to do here to make sure we hear all sides of the stories. But so far it's proved to be uh, a very difficult challenge. Well, certainly, Anissa, it sounds like there's a tough situation there and certainly a very complex and challenging. But do stay safe. And we, of course, are uh, keeping an eye on what's happening there through your uh, Twitter updates. Uh, Anissa Nawi, thanks very much indeed for bringing us the latest from Tripoli.